an hour and 10 minutes, followed by Q&A. Please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi tahirin. I am honored to be with you today. Uh, firstly, I thank Islamic Center and my colleague, uh, Dr. Uh, Tehrani, and you because of uh, you know participating today. As you know, um, I want to share uh, my ideas today in two parts. One part is uh, completely observation to modern life. And in the second part, we you know, look to Quran and narration that uh, help us to understand more. Uh, our uh, subject today is that is Zohd, asceticism practical in modern life style. Uh, for understanding and concentrating on this question, we should analyze this question to four parts. One, what is modern lifestyle? We should firstly define this and understand what is the modern life. After that, if we understand modern life, is it thought in modern life need or after need, is it necessary? And is it possible, for example, maybe we need that, but is not possible? This is three question. And after that, the main important answer question is how? I don't know why. For, uh, you know, investigate this question, I like to suppose yourself have fallen from other planet to, in the, to the earth in one of the modern cities. Could you describe the modern life? Because very important for understanding something that we used to live to that. And we make us a, as a, a stranger. The outside, after that, look carefully to what is modern life. Or we should, you know, uh, get out, you know, escape ourselves out of the busy life and sit somewhere and observe ourselves and other people and the style of their life and report that what is modern life. The modern life, the according to many majority of scholars, they said that the main factor factor in modern life is instrumental rationalism. Instrumental rationalism is it, you know, concentrating on mind and reason, but for, you know, use for getting something for a, an aim, not as a value. Teleological, is it instrumental rationalism? We call it in Persian, Aghla Abzari. After 
17th century because of many processes that I don't want to talk about this. You know, human being accept to use instrumental rationalism. And the second factor that is very important in modern life is hedonism. We call it in Persian, lazat girai. By rationalism and hedonism, that is the petrol of human being to go forward, to get benefit from the world and change and capture the world. Science, you know, uh, improved. In nowadays, you see that the sciences are very important and these sciences make made many uh, you know effect in our life and the technology is one of the effect of that technology is the way that we can use knowledge science it was very important for human to change the nature and get his benefits. Industrial development is another you know, result and effect of instrumental rationalism and hedonism and science and technology. And capital, capitalism is a idea that use all these things to change and to improve the world and human being life. And the fifth factor was secularism. I explain more in the, you know, uh, this session about what is that secularism, that the religion is not have you know, the role that he had, it had before. But another factor that help human is will to power, to become powerful. Qudrat is the essence of the modern life. These factors raise the standard of human being life. From eating, drinking, clothing, housing, prosperity, sex, entertainment, health, freedom, democracy, media information, mass of knowledge, transportation, happiness, human right. And no difference between religious people and others to use these things. Today, a religious person, you, if you look to yourself, you use this type of technologies in your life. Transportation to go to Arba'in for two days, three days after that, you will come back and continue walking. You use your tablet and you read the book, Quran. You listen to Maddahi, to Du'as. This factors that is the result of you no know, this uh, introduction that I told change human being lives. 
the standard change. And I think that if we look as a normal look, we like it, we love it. One day when we wanted to eat breakfast, for example, me as an Iranian, I had some, you know, options. The Tabrizi cheese that is from the city of Agha Dr. Jahangir. After the two day, you go to Asda, to Sainsbury, you find 70 type of cheese. And the diversity variety of things is all different now. Happiness, satisfaction, you know, made people to immigrate to these modern countries. No difference between moment, faithful, and others. You see in the in this you know, file that human use all these things, car, laptop, bazaar, food. But the modern life has another aspect, another side. Who could understand this? It's not possible for all people to understand because we should go out of modern life after that look as an object. The, one of the main you know, element that we find the reign of quantity. Rene Genon said this, the reign of quantity سیتره زمان سیتره کمیت The money, how much you have The number you, to, you got from university The level of you We mentioned the grave as well That line one, the second Everywhere you should talk about the number, the quantity. One car, two car, one house, two house. Hedonism. Hedonism is one of the important factor that lost sex, Appetite, you know, or the effect of this hedonism. Utilitarian ethics, you know, akhlaq that its aim is to get benefit from the world. It's not time for explaining. I should pass quickly from these things. Busy life. Always we are busy. It's not possible to stop. There is another, you know, result of this modern life that I will talk about this iron cage. Weber, you know, mentioned this. Self alienation, that we forget ourselves as well when we go out until coming back to house. And meaninglessness, is there any meaning in life, our life? What is the meaning of our life? 
if someone look carefully and understand the essence of modern life, could understand what all people, you know, majority of people couldn't understand it. But what, now we want to go deeper, you know, to understand uh, modern life. Look to this, the reign of quantity. Always people talk about the money. It's not possible to stop. If you don't think about money, how you could send your children to best school? How could you get the best car? How you could go to a trip? How could you have a good house in good position of London, for example? And sometimes the money close, you know, our eyes, may close our eyes, make us blind. There is a story in Iranian story that a driver, a bus driver told the, his assistant, he looked that some people are waiting for the bus. He said, pick up, for example, the price was five pounds. Pick up the five pounds. People look to people as a money. What is the role of this person for gaining more money? Because we look to our utility, our you know, benefit. And every person is money for us. How could I be friend with this person to get the good job after that to, to get much money? And after that, richness, poorness would be happen in this world, modern life. Some people are very rich, some people are poor. If we have the ethics of, you know, utilitarianism ethics, it means that in the first step, when the Bentham Stuart Mill, they talk about this, they said that we should get the benefit of more people and we should forget the less. But after a while, after centuries, now some people think about their benefit and other people, you know, should be poor. You see in this, that the train goes from where? Today, majority of people should, you know, lose their life and some people would be richer and richer and richer. Hedonism, I could say the essence of the modern life is hedonism. Everything for lazat. Knowledge as well, you see some people, some uh, you know, as scholars, they study Islamic studies. But when you ask why, he said, because of job. Hedonism, if we get hedonism from the modern life, this train would be a stop. But hedonism has some problem. We call it today, psychologists 
or phil some philosopher, they call it the hedonic adaptation. You have, you are unhappy, you are, you don't have something, you have desire, you have some needs. After that, you get it. For a while, when you use a car, is it Ferrari? But you feel unhappy. Again, you should have something to be happy. And this is a cycle. And in capit capitalism, they know this factor, this point. After that, they try to bring new hedonic you know, issues. And people should try their best to get money, to get you know, these new options. After that, they become unhappy. They call it in another uh, you know, term that hedonic trill mill. You have desire, you strive, you obtain, you enjoy, adapt, you need desire more. But you are in the first point. Say I run 20%, after that you say, is it, I, I use it, no, I should go 40. And not, you are always angry, hungry. You have always appetite. We have always lust. This is a problem in modern style life. Problem for people, but money for, you know, the maker of, you know, politics. And consumerism that two days ago, our Shammai talked about that, is the result of that. Technology make perception. Is it, this is very important. That for when we want, when we need something, no difference between need and wants. If you don't have any perception, any imagination from something, you can't want it. You should have perception after that, you feel that is attractive, you say, I want it. If a child doesn't know this type of car, this, this type of toys, he doesn't want. But you go to bazaar, he see after that, he said, I want it. Because the perception is very important. And in for, information, media, you know, does do their job as a bring, you know, perception to our mind. When we feel hedonic adaptation, they bring another, another perception and we like it. This tablet is this, after that another tablet, after that another tablet, after that another tablet. Because the modern life, the technology, industrial, you know, factories, they need, they should work. And we lose our wage our body, our age for others. Technology make perception, 
but by advertisement after that we feel that we need all new ones the another things that make us to forget everything and we run 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 without thinking is busy life busy life because it's not possible we can escape escape from the modern life because we should live we should run we should work hard harder and harder and harder work for work for work for work no difference between different between moment or non moment all people should do should try their best to live this busy life and hard work hard job you know make many difficulty in families one of these is parental you know alienation the in mass of knowledge mass of information tv mobiles walk you know nobody knows others and this make loneliness everyone is love individualism when you're alone alone you think about yourself your benefit and you can't think about others and they sit in the train nobody talk to each other nobody knows not others family as well they don't have time after that they become insensitive cold and indifferent come on one of the nihilists has a book is the stranger begone in persian in the first page he start with this quotation maman died today or oh, yesterday i don't know i got a telegram from the home mother disease funeral tomorrow faithfully yours that doesn't mean anything maybe it was yesterday no other senses this is the description of you know a man in modern life Max Weber is a sociologist uh, use a term as an iron cage he said the modern life instrumental rationalism capitalism you know made a cage and nobody could escape from this they make or train people like before as they like it and this machine would be continue working and nobody 
could escape from that. And some people couldn't think about that. Now, if someone knows what he does he do or she do, we come, now we concentrate on secularism. The modern life, you know, send religion out or in private, in personal side. And they think as a God, as a God of the gaps. They said, do you know why we needed God before? Because we didn't know. No science could answer our question. God filled the part of puzzles at that time. But today we don't need to God. Because of that, we should thank God and we say retired God. God is retired. And Nietzsche said, God is dead or died. You know, look to the role of priest. They needed Ghosl Tamid. They needed Sunday for a short time or in buried funeral you know, process. As a Maulana, as well. How, how, in which, you know, way we think we look to the Maulana. Maulana is for recitation of Azan. After that, in the funeral process. Or sometimes if someone is sick, oh Maulana, pray for me. Or if they can't do anything and the rest is one of them, when they, you know, buy a house, they invite a Molana to pray. It's okay. All in marriage and divorce. You don't need. Secularism, you know, change the world and their understanding and their ideas about God, religion. And what, what's happened? When people could get right of the authority of modern life, when they look to himself or herself, they said, who am I? Self alienation is one of the problem that human being face, some of them, not all. We project ourselves to work, to bazaar, to shop. And this is what focal you know, understood that, that the instrumental rationalism, you know, make you, made human to think about outside as an object to get benefit, but they forgot subject. No one think about subject. Alaikum and fosakum. Nobody think about that. This subject is forgotten, is lost. Nobody has spent from this soul, his self, from, for clothes, for food, for this, for that, and for mind, for spiritual activities, no because they forgot it. 
in this modern life, we don't need it to eat. If we understand after that, we feel, you know, self-alienation. And depression, hopelessness, meaninglessness, if God is not, why we live in this world with these calamities, difficulties, terrible life? When somebody loses family, when there is not any meaning in this life, not they don't think about the de death, they don't think about the God, the future. But why I am I face this type of calamities, range, shar, evil. Suicide is one of the result of this. If someone couldn't understand the meaning, can't he can't find she can't find the meaning? Why? This is naturally that someone suicide himself, and some people will, would be loneliness feel loneliness. No, if we go out and feel the problem of, we confront the problem of, uh, you know, modern life, is it any meaning in this life or no? There are two answers. Some people, isn't, they said, no, it's not possible. And some people suicide, you know, uh, and they said, oh, it's not possible to live and there is not any meaning. A stoicism, neo-stoicism here today, we, say, we, we call it in, uh, you know, Persian and Arabic, Rawaqi, no Rawaqi. They said, that we could we come we should come back to ourselves. After that, we feel that we don't do anything because we should know our power. And something happened in this world is not in our hand. We should do what we can. Because of that, Seneca said that a lady that you know was very angry about losing his uh, son. He advised him that you should think that it was a gift from the world, from the chance. After that, people said, oh, is it okay? I've all concentration, meditation, because of that, some people follow Buddhism to feel self-satisfaction, to escape from you know, calamities, trivial times. Some people, yes. They said, yes, we have. The religious people as us, they said, God is still is the only real source for meaning. I concentrate on real meaning. Why? Because some people bring a meaning that is, it is illusion, tabahom. For example, Nietzsche. In one of his book, he, you know, quoted from Zartosht. That God is died, we should come back to ourselves 
after that, he, you know, bring the, uh, the you know, term of Superman. What is Superman? He said, we don't have any meaning out of ourselves. Meaning means no aim, no purpose. We should come back to ourselves, find meaning in our life, that I fulfill my power to be Superman. Is it good meaning for love or is it illusion? If I would be busy with fulfillment of my power and I forget that this, could we call it meaning? It's illusion. Come on said no, we don't have any meaning outside and in ourselves. But we should create a value in myth, myth of Sisyphus, we call it in Persian, Afsani Sisyph. He said, use a myth Osture, about Sisyphus, Sisyphus, that God captured him and ordered him to move a rock to the top of mountain. And he tried this after that, when he was a little bit to be, to arrive the top, the rock come back, will come back. Again, CZF start doing. He says CZF is happy because against the gods, he does his, you know, duty. Is it good meaning for human? Is it not illusion? Unfortunately, some scholars, philosophers make people to be busy for a short time. Is it right that when the God is not in their ideas, they don't get any role to God, they can't find the meaning. Conclusion in this part. We describe the modern style life, lifestyle. Now we want to know that asceticism is need, is a need. You, you find today that yes, at least, at least that we say Zohud is controlling our soul. Because I didn't uh, define the meaning of Zohud now. Step by step, I want to do. But at least that you, you go out, you look to the object. After that, you say, I control my soul to use. We call it no Zohud. Everyone could, you know, accept that Zohd is necessary, impossible and necessary in this world. But how? If we want to answer the proposed method, must we have some, you know, uh, attributes or ability. The proposed method must be free from illusions and fantasies, as khial, from khial, from tawahum. What is zohot? 
when I sit in front of some someone to you know purpose of you know propose something to me, I said, oh, I don't want illusion. I don't want to live with illusion. I want to know the real life. If the real life doesn't have any meaning, I accept it. But I don't want to play, you know, with myself. I want to face the real things. The third, this path must be compatible with human being nature. Because if we, we offer something that has any contradiction with our nature is not acceptable. Because when we look to the modern life, we see that some part of it is okay. We love it, we like it. Who doesn't like the technology? Who doesn't like the food, drink, entertainments? We like it. But the problem is something else. And not shut down natural needs. For example, don't look, don't have sex, don't like food, don't like, is not acceptable. And the force that this way should not be with new, you know, events, innovations, and don't have any contradiction with reason mind. Because we are human being, we like our mind and reason. And we can't accept something that would be opposite of our mind. I like to live, but by my mind, by my reason, by my lust, by, by my nature. Now we want to say what is the Islam proposed to human life. I don't know, I doctor, what time is it now? You have at least uh, 20, yeah, 20 minutes. Okay. Thank you. Is there any question in this part? Or could I convey my message? What message? You have conveyed your message, definitely. What is the question? Nobody has question? Share his idea with me. Do you want to open it to Q&A now and continue? Is because I didn't talk about Quran or else you, you should, you know, fight with Muhammadian idea. We assume that you would, you would cover that in the second part of your uh, presentation. So I think maybe you should go ahead with the presentation. No question, no question. Everyone, everyone like, you know, like the modern life or? I'm sure there will I be. I said something that is wrong. We can, we can open to question if you, if you prefer. I think, I think that if I, I, you know, uh, know some question after that, I know that, uh, what is the reaction of the audiences? We will, we, we open it to question and answer, and then we go back to the second part. Any, any questions from the participants, please go ahead. In the meantime, while uh, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Yan was giving his lecture, I did put some of the names there in the chat section, the reference to Thus Spoke Zarathustra, a book for all and none, which was a book written by Nietzsche, Friedrich Nietzsche. Uh, someone, Someone, uh, Hakim Master, has asked, I would like to hear answer how Islam wants us to balance and the dunya and akhira and what role should Zohd play in our lives? That's 
Hakima master's question. Do you want to deal with that? Do you want to answer that? Sheikh Mohammed Yeah. Okay, so she has asked, I would like to hear how Islam wants to create a balance between dunya and akhirah. Okay. And what role should Zoh play in our lives? Is it the next part? We, I, I like to know the, yeah. the question about the first. Okay, any, oh. any question related to the first part? Please go ahead. Someone has said very true and interesting, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Yan. That's what another person. Okay. So Sheikh has said, I have understood your first half. Uh, looking forward to the next part. Okay. It means that they say continue. Yes, they were, they were, they were, eager, they were eager to hear the rest. Okay. So. Uh, I want to, uh, you know, uh, talk about uh, one of the quotation in Nahjul Balagha, 4, 439, one of the Hikmat, one of the Hikmat. Qala kulluhu bayna kalamatayn min al-Quran. The rule of asceticism is confined between two expressions of Quran. What is the Quran in Surah Hadid? Qala Allah Azza wa Jal Likay la ta'asaw ala ma fa'atakum wa la tafrahu bima atakum Allah said that you may not grieve for what escape you, no exalt for what comes your way. What is this description? It's different from our understanding. Amir al Mumanin didn't talk about the stuff, the car, the house, the clothes, the food. This is something in our, you know, mind, our soul, that what is our relation to these things? Could we escape from them? Or we attach ourselves? The stuff is for us or we are for dunya. This is very special meaning. You can have everything you like. Everything you want. But don't feel happiness in the level that you can't escape from that. It means that maybe you don't have anything, but you don't have Zahid. Maybe you ca can be a person that has power, money, wealth, and would be Zahid. فَمَنْ لَمْ يَعْسَ عَلَى الْمَازِي وَلَمْ يَفْرَحْ بِالْآتِي فَقَدْ أَخَزَ الزُّهْدَ بِتَرَفَيْهِ Whoever does not grieve over what he misses and does not revel over what comes to him he got Zohd from two sides. He is Zohd. Is it different that you sit in a, for example, low price car or Ferrari? No. Is it different that you have five clothes or one? No.
If you need, you put. But don't, don't go to red line, haram. We understand from this narration that the mind of person is very important. Unfortunately, in our religious life, we caught the root of people and they need other people to think. I mean, when many talk to us, like, who knows that I give or no? Nobody else. I need to others to convey the message to me. But for fulfillment of this concept, I have responsibility. Someone asked Agha Sh Shamai that what is the difference between needs and wants? No, no difference. And it's not wrong that someone offer new wants. Because if no one, you know, offer, we would live like 2000 year ago, 20 century ago. It's not important. We should know that our life is according to Islam. Is it wajibat muharramat? And between them, two sides, we should look to ourselves that we are in which position. The, the point that I should concentrate on that, that Zod is, doesn't have a one level. Zod is a way to taqwa. We call this type of thing, that is weak, would be weak or could have tension. We call this type of concept mushakak, like nur. The nur of light is nur, light. The light of uh, a small light in our house is a light. The sun is light, but very, you know, difference between this light and that light. So, doesn't have one level. And we can't talk to people according to high levels. Everyone should fulfill his duty according to his level, his understanding. And who knows my level? Myself. But I should open my mind, my ear, to criticize of people outside, to get knowledge. We should think and we should listen. After that fulfillment is our duty. But Zohd doesn't have one level, so many levels. For a person, this type of things is, could be zod for others. We can't count them as a zahid because their level is higher. No, I go forward. This is the letter 31, advice of Amir al muminin to Imam Hassan or one of his sons. وَأَلَمْ يَغِينًا You should know certainty. أَنَّكَ لَنْ تَبْلُغَ أَمَلَكَ Oh! You can't, you know, get or receive to your desires, all your desires. And you can't exceed your this time, time. You have a limit. And you are in the 
way of other track of others. You are not different from others. What I should do? He said, don't, don't leave the talab. Don't ask. Don't feel lazat. Don't feel happiness. No. Fakhafiz fit talab. Control the volume of wants. It means that we should want, but control. Why? Because God is here, Allah Tawakit Allah. And hereafter is here. And this life is not forever. No. You, you should live in this modern life. If you can change, change it. I will, I will tell in the last point. If you, can, if you can't, if you can't, and you should live in this world, you know, make the level of your wants lower. And moderate in earning. Your casp, your job would be nice, beautiful. What does it mean? It means that we, should, we don't lose your nafs. This is the criteria. Your nafs would be solemn, could, should be solemn. And if your nafs is okay, use everything that is not haram. Why? Why? Because of this verse of Quran, Surah Arab. قُلْ مَنْ حَرَّمَ زِينَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي أَخْرَجَ لِعِبَادِ وَالتَّيِّبَاتِ مِنَ الرِّزْقِ Who has forbidden the adornment of, you know, Allah? He has brought forth for his servant, for ibad, for mu'mineen. What tayyiba, tayyib means something that, that when you eat it or use it, you love it. Who, who said that we can cut the root of our lust, our appetites? Allah said, Alladhi ahsana kulli shay'in khalaqah. In another words, khalaqah. Allah has created human as a best way. But we want to cut some, uh, you know, appetites in our soul. Who said this? This is for mu'mineen. And pure of that young, uh, judgment day is for mu'mineen. Today, kafirin as well, they use it. No, someone could criticize, ask question. Oh, Molana, you said that we should use, we should have lazat. But what you talk about, how, how could you talk about this verse of Quran? You forgot it. What is the verse? Surah Aqaf. أَزْهَبْتُمْ تَيِّبَاتِكُمْ فِي حَيَاتِكُمُ الدُّنْيَا وَاسْتَمْتَعْتُمْ بِهَا The day when the faceless are exposed to the fire, they will be told, you exhausted your good. Good things in the life of the world and enjoy them. What does it mean? You, you want to say that Allah said, the faceless are in the fire because they enjoyed in this life. And they exhausted their good things. No, is not right. Allah said, you waste 
all your age, your ability for enjoying. Allah bless our teacher, Aga Pahlavani Rahmatullahi. He said, oh, oh, dear student, you know, use the dunya and get lizzat, hedonic, hedonic issues, but let yourself get permission to yourself, give opportunity to yourself to taste the other lazat, a spiritual na'amat as well. But kafirin, faceless people, they spend their ability, their time, their effort for enjoying and they lost their soul. The arif as well get benefit of lazat, but his lazat is different. Because of that, we can't do what they do. We should feel lazat. We should feel satisfaction. We should feel happiness. Sometimes you cry in the matam mat mat Imam Hussein, but you feel satisfaction, self satisfaction, and happiness. It means that the last that should be, they, they are the orafa, the spiritual men. They, you know, leave the lazat dunya for another lazat. Talke lazat in the living this lazat. There is another lazat in living this type of lazat. But losing all lazat is not acceptable. And as well, I will mention don't that none, you know, there is advice order from Ahlul Bayt and their narration that we should use dunya as well. Not only we can, but we should do. I will explain why. But I don't know, I have time or not. Ah, Dr. Tehrani, are you here? I am here and your time is almost up, but I think you could talk for another 10 minutes. Is that enough? Oh, is it enough? Uh, enough? Yes. Yeah, I want to something more, but would, I think it is enough. Would, would you be able to finish it in 10 minutes? If, if not, we'll give you more time and then we will have a shorter Q&A. Quran mentioned in Surah Taha, when Quran tried to explain the, uh, the Adam and Shaitan and Iblis and what happened to Adam and Hawa. فَقُلْنَا يَا آدَمْ إِنَّ هَذَا عَدُوٌّ لَكَ وَلَزَوْجِكَ فَلَا يُخْرِجَنَّكُمَا مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ فَتَشْقَ You will be miserable if you go from, if you send you out from Jannat. Why? Because four things in the earth make difficulty for you. Because indeed you will neither be hungry in it nor naked. Indeed you will neither be thirsty in it nor suffer from the sun. It means that if you want to, if you go to the earth, you face difficulty for clothes, for food, for house, for clothes. Before this session, I thought, I was thinking that the problem for getting this, for finding the food, and now I understand, I understand 
uh, you know, one other point that sometime food and drink and if it would be much as well, we, we face the problem. What, what we should do, we should control our self. Whoever disregard my remembrance, he shall be a wretched life. Maishat zank doesn't mean that a life that we don't have food, this and that. It is a spiritual problem. But what is the problem? What is the what? is the cause of this problem is, you know, forget, forgetting, forgetting the remembrance of God. It means that we should remember of God and live in this world. And the criteria for using this word for, would be Allah's order. This is the meaning of Zod. الذين كفروا أعمالهم كسراب بقيعة يحسبه الزمان ما حتى إذا جاءه لم يجد أشياء. In last verse that I recite for you, read for you, Quran mentioned the problem problem of meaninglessness of the word. Who feel the rich life? The person that forget a lot about it all. Now Quran mentioned, "Waladina kafaru amalhum ke sarab baqiyatin yasabu zamanu ma." Some people live with illusion. Their works are like a mirage in a plain, which the thirsty man supposes to be water. When he comes to it, he finds it to be nothing, nothing. If they don't feel Allah's present, they can't do after that their amal would be nothing. But there, be, there he finds Allah who will pay him his full account. Some, sometimes, they find that Allah is present. Why, why, but today they forgot it. They said no meaning in this life. No, it is the last verse of Quran, but I have some narration, not in this session, inshallah, in the future, I will explain. But in this session, in this verse, Quran mentioned that you should change the modern life, the system, the culture. If you want to do about that, aqimu salat, not praying, aqimu salat, establishing the tenant of Allah namaz, you should. You should change this world because you face difficulty in this world, in this culture, this iron cage. But he said, "Lagad arsalna rusalna bil bayyanat wa anzalna maahum al kitab wal mizan liyqum al nas bil ghast." Not one person, not individually. All people, all mu'minin should try to change this culture because this culture make people to be like them. This is the last duty. But before that, we should have some other duties. But inshallah, you should know that we have, uh, you know, one of the problem that I mentioned is hedonic adaptation. Hedonic adaptation, you know, when you have more after that, you feel that you are unhappy, you need more. In narration, they advise us to do shukr, 
when they want to describe shock, they said, always remember the ni'mat. Remember your wife, remember your husband, remember your children, remember your dad, remember your mind. So maybe you lose some sometime. No, no, fulfill your needs. Get less that from them. Because of that, according to narration, opposite of what we have done because of people, they don't show our ni'amat because we are scared from others. But in narration, they said, you should show because by showing, you do shokr, you thank a lot of work. After that, no hedonic adaptation because always, you know, oh, I have these children, I, I have, boy, I have care, I should kiss, I have these, I have hoes, I have money, I have car, I have. We should show it. We should remember it, we should count it. Oh, I have this, that, this, that. This is the advice that in, uh, you know, Rawaqi uh, method, they advise people to remember, but, but in our narration, we have deep, deeper than them. But unfortunately, nobody work according to narration. I mention myself, Alhamdulillah, you are the people that are always following the Quran and narration. Allahumma ajjal fi farajim, Allahumma sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Inshallah, I am waiting for your question. Thank you very much uh, for a very interesting and very insightful uh, presentation. Uh, please ask your question one question at a time. Uh, preferably the questions that are similar should be asked one after another. So uh, either put your question in the chat section, we prefer that you verbalize your question. Please go ahead. I have. Who is the next person? Either raise your hand or turn on your camera or your microphone or both. Any questions? Uh -huh. If you okay. have question and criticize my understanding, it, it means that you criticize my understanding. No Quran, no narration. You know, um, if I'm getting worry. more job offers, here is the question. If I'm getting more job offers, but I refuse as I am earning enough, will that be uh, me refusing God's blessings or being moderate? As in being, as having the balance between dunya and akhira. So the question is that, is that clear or should, or should I read it one more time? No, you should, uh, should explain for me. Could I have the, the because I can't read the, the uh, could I have the which message? Answer? Which one is? This oh, is offers. Oh, oh, I am getting more audio of what? Yeah, the last question. Uh, I don't know why the question no, is. I understood. I understood. I understood. It's related to your position. Because, because if you feel that by this, you know, saving, enough saving, you can leave. After that, you can do your about this and that is okay. It's related to yourself. But maybe someone else said, I do, I work hard, more, more, I work, I do more to get money, to get power, to help others. But I don't lose my soul. This is very important. The criteria that in our, you know, is that in our action, we don't forget ourselves. If you feel that by this type of earning, you can live and you can, uh, you know, care of your soul is okay. If you think that you can get more money and after that you care your soul and you can help others, you can do, but, you know, getting more power is very important. If we can, 
we should try our best. But is rely on people is not an advice for all. So it changes from person to person, depending yeah. on the person's yeah. Yeah. abilities, uh, psychic uh, uh, state, uh, etc. Yeah. Very good. Um, any other question? Okay, so uh, while we're waiting for the question, let me uh, make a comment and see what uh, Sheikh Mohammed Yan thinks about that. Uh, one of the duties we have in this lifetime is to our bodies. And very, um, a, a very perplexing question about the issue of Zoht and the uh, balance between uh, this world and the hereafter is that many, many uh, young people who become interested in this path, they forget their duties to their bodies. And I, I just wanted to share an, an anecdote about Marhum uh, Ayatollah Mirza Ali Qazi, who was, I think he was the uh, teacher of Marhum Pahlawani as well, yes? No, teacher of uh, Allama Tabatabai. Allama Tabatabai and uh, Muhammad Hassan Tabatabai, the, the brother yeah. of yeah. Ayatollah Tabatabai, Ayatollah Muhammad Hussein Tabatabai. The, the story uh, goes like this that uh, one of the uh, clerics sees uh, Marhum Ghazi in a chai house or a, in a tea house uh, in Najaf. And then he goes to him and says, Okay, why are you sitting here with the average people? Why don't you come to my house? I'll give you tea. Um, uh, Anu says, I'm sitting here because I want to have tea. Uh, and after that, I would like to visit the shrine of Imam Ali. So when he goes to that person's house, the person gives him tea and then it starts chastising him, saying that, well, well you know, you, you are a scholar. You shouldn't be sitting with the average people. The response by Ayatollah Ghazi is very interesting. He says, our body is like a donkey. And our duty is to take care of this body first. Because if this body is not satisfied, it will not uh, be happily taking us to the destination. So having said that comment, uh, if Sheikh Muhammad would like to uh, uh, add to that, if not, uh, there is a question. I would like to read that question. Please. Any comments from your side? No, Alhamdulillah, you said everything. Can you please give an example how Imam alayhi salam or the prophets divided their day into portions to keep the balance between uh, this world and hereafter? This, is, this involves job, family, social circle, worshiping acts etc yes according to narration they said divide uh, your time to three part one part for job and gaining money this and that one for about that and enjoyment one for family one part for family three part according to their advice but let me read for you one of the one part of the ayah makar makhlaq very important allahumma salli ala muhammad wa alihi wakfli ma yashqalun al ihtimam bi wa sta'amilni bima tas'aluni ghadan an wa staferq ayami fi ma khalaqtani lah o allah Sometimes we face some difficulty that we should think about that, work hard. Oh Allah, sufficient, be sufficient for us on something that make us to think, to work hard. Help me to do something according to question that you have in the few year after for, from me. 
but we do something maybe no, you know, no benefit, no result. Oh Allah, make me, help me to, I would be in a way that I do something that you ask me, you would, I would be asked by you. Oh Allah, make my time free to do something that you has created me for that reason. This is a very good criteria. Why, why Allah, what Allah asked me that I should work? Don't be lazy. I should, you know, bring money for my children, my wife. I should bring, I should sit with them. According to a narration, Imam said that sitting with family is more important, more, you know, important me or more sawa for me than, you know, praying this number of praying in Masjid on Nabi. Because Allah will ask. Sometimes someone should study his talabah. Sometimes this and that. We should look to what is our responsibility and we should do that. And we, do, we shouldn't forget, you know, our duty because of one, and one another. Sometimes we lose, we waste, you know, our time to some something that is not our duty, and we forget our family, our friend, our mom, our dad, this and that. Well, we have another question from Imran Hussein. Please go ahead, Imran, and ask your question. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Um, Mulana, thank you very much for your talk. Uh, question is, asceticism that you talked about in your speech, from the Quran, it, it appears from the ayats you gave, it is a state of the mind, because uh, the first the important ayat you gave when it said, that, you know, you don't grieve for what you lo lose and you don't get too happy for what you have. Uh, so, so my question is, is therefore all the prophets and all the imams practice asceticism the same or different? No, the, it was different because the time was different. You know, according to uh, one of narration, I, I like to bring this narration, but I couldn't. But uh, this is, uh, is not exactly the narration, but this is the message of that. You know, imam was in a house he married new marriage, got, uh, you know, new marriage. After that, two, he had two guests. One of, you know, they came after that day, you know, uh, uh, after a while sitting with Imam, they uh, went out. Imam said, today, uh, please come tomorrow. When he, they come, he said that I was, Yesterday, you had something in our, your mind. I was in a house and my wife was new. I did according to his needs, her needs. The time, the place, the condition are different. What we could get, the spirit of their message. This is the meaning of ishtahad. This is why we say that religion is new always. Quran is new. Because the time change, zaman, makan or would be different. After that, if the subject would be different, the work would be different. Because of that, the, uh, Imam Amir al muminin had a Duty, Imam Sadiq was, his life was different. They did according to time, 
place, conditions, and their duties. Okay. It was sufficient answer? Imran Hussein? Asante, Mulan Asad. Thank you. Okay, the next question is from Sister Asa Jawad. Please go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as um, I just want to ask, uh, please, you know, regarding um, to balance, if I want, like, as a parent, if I want to be Zahid, and, you know, um, I'm not thinking about money and, you know, the condition of my life, but, you know, is that will be fair or this is maybe my children my kids you know they they looking to to have you know you know this in modern life they want this and that so if i be zahid and i try to teach them or uh, maybe they get it or they not get it so my duty to be to think about myself to be zahid and think about myself only or you know my duty to think about my family and give them um you know the opportunity first think about them and think about what they want first and then think about myself. So it is, to be honest, I don't, um, I don't know how to balance between visa as a person with myself and I, you know, keep my duty for my family and give them uh, the good level of life they want. Um, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, the parents as a father or mother. You yeah, know? I understood. I understood. Yeah. I understood. Thank you. Uh, you know, the, what is important that your duty is you should, you know, concentrate on your soul. But no contradiction between, you know, concentrating on your soul and doing your wazaif. Because doing your wazaif is keeping your soul as well. Because the wazaif is something that Allah told you. And you do for sake of a lot of work at all. You wash the dishes, cook the food, do this and that. It's for a lot of work at all. It means that you are in the way of Zod. Why you want to describe Zod different from that? If someone was, you know, doing something, and he feel the presence of Allah, it, it, he is in the way of Zohd. Because Zohd is firstly a spiritual. After that, we should, this uh, spiritual mode should have some effect in our life. We think that Zohd is, for example, going to Hogza, this and that. He says it in one way. But another way, if you train a good boy and girls, you know, daughter, after that, it, it would be Zod for you. Maybe the level of this person would be more than other people. We don't know that who could achieve the aim. It is very important that Zod is doing our duty. But, but, and you know, knowing our duty, understanding our duty is not easy. We should ask, we should read, we should listen, we should talk. After that, we should worry about the, our uh, responsibility and duty and we should do according to that. It's not easy, but uh, it's not in a way that we sometimes we understand that if, for example, I was always in praying, or fasting, it is Zod. No, Zod is doing according to uh, our duties and responsibilities. Is it okay? So, so Jawad, did you get your, uh, your reply yes. or would you like him to continue? No, no, yes, yes, that's fine. Yeah, it is, it is clear now. Thank you very much. Well, we have a, a number of questions from Sister Narmina. I assume it's a sister, Narmina. And uh, I can, I'll, I will ask um, 
one of them. And then if there are no other questions, we go back to other questions that she has raised. She says, um, if the role of religion was to help men of faith to escape the perpetual circular race to nowhere, and this hasn't happened, what went wrong? That's the first question. The method that we did according to that. One more because time. It's not because the method that religion, you know, taught us is, is for every time, every place. If we couldn't achieve our aim, it means that we didn't do our duties. But what is important that we should know that we didn't receive to our aims and purpose. If we, and if we are right that we didn't receive to our a, aims and purposes, it means that we did something wrong. Now, oh, Sister Narina, if you think uh, this part of the question has been uh, answered, please uh, react. So we, we go to the next one. Okay, we go to the, to the next question. Uh, is there any other question before I read her uh, following questions? Anybody else would like to ask a question or type? Okay, well, we'll go to the next question by Sister Narmina. And going on, this is this next question. Uh, going on from there, okay, some would suggest that the reign of quantity is finished and we are entering a new cycle, which is being reset for us at the moment as we approach technological singularity. What role can a man of religion have in that world learning from the cycle we are leaving behind? That's the second question by Sister Narmina. Uh, I didn't understand exactly the question, Narmina. Okay, Sister Narmina, please reward this. I'm going to ask the other question. Reward it in such a way that it's understandable. The, and your last question is, is it possible for an individual to be ascetic if he or she is not sovereign? And is this not the main problem of the modern man, that it lacks, that modern man lacks sovereignty and is an, enslaved by the system it has helped to create? Yes, it is. I, I explained this. I know why Sister Nermina, uh, you know. Maybe she, maybe she wants more clarification. So please, if I you... said that we are in the, uh, you know, irons. Uh, iron cage. Cage. Max, Max Weber's iron cage. Yeah, and, and I saw that uh, we are under the pressure of the authority of the, you know, the system, the technological system. And uh, we should do, we should, Zohd is doing according to our duty in this iron cage. If we can't, you know, escape completely, we can do according to our responsibility and duty. I know that uh, Sister um, Nermina has an uh, accurate qu uh, question, but maybe I can't understand the. Uh, uh, All right, since you have not rewarded it, um, we will go to other people. Anybody who wants to ask other questions? Uh, Sister Namina, maybe while Sister Namina is rewarding her second question. Uh, is there a prayer we should read to help us keep the balance and more, more so not be attached uh, to this world? That's a question from someone who identifies as only a dot. Is, is there, there a prayer? Yeah, yes, this prayer that we do every day, it, it has the role of, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, uh, Baba, I, I, this is famous from Ayatollah Bajat. You know, sometimes I, I had a friend, he used to go to ask questions from Ayatollah, oh, to tell me what I should do. He said, 
ترک محرمات doing واجبات duties and living forbidden the prayer is one of them but we should we should concentrate more we should look to our pocket that we have maybe there are some mooses on that or some hole because in the you know uh, meanwhile we pray we do sometimes wrong not this lady but uh, i talk about myself because i have my experience okay any other question from the participants um well at this stage since there are no questions any comments from uh, Sheikh Mohammed Young at the end of your uh, session? Would you like to make any comments? Okay, we move on to the uh, last part of our uh, final session. I ask that if possible, um, you could give uh, feedback on all the sessions you have attended in the chat section now. If you could uh, uh, do this for the next couple of minutes, we would be grateful. Uh, also, in the meantime, I would like to thank all those people who helped with the preparation for these events, especially uh, uh, Brother Dr. Azhar, who, while he was afflicted with Corona, uh, he helped with the organizing and uh, uh, follow up uh, of the with the emails that he sent reminders that he sent, setting up of the Zoom session. We're grateful to him, inshallah. We pray that Allah will uh, give him a speedy recovery. Please pray for him. I'm also thankful to all the brothers and sisters at the Islamic College who helped with the uh, smooth running of these uh, nights. Uh, and uh, without further ado, there is a question Okay, I think that's a, that's not a question. That's a feedback. All right, so that's a feedback, inshallah. And do not hesitate from uh, being critical, uh, and uh, because ev every right criticism that you make will help us improve our uh, ses future sessions, inshallah. For instance, perhaps you can mention whether it was. Uh, easy for you to attend these successive nights. Uh, so we'll take that into account whether we should have any future series uh, uh, one after another every night. Um, this is one of the considerations. Uh, so far, all the uh, reactions have been positive, alhamdulillah. What we do not mind if we receive any uh, uh, critical assessment uh, because uh, we are all human uh, and it is possible that we might have made mistakes. It is possible that uh, there are ways to improve and better uh, these uh, sessions. Uh, okay, Alhamdulillah, one of the Mashallah, they keep coming, and before I read one, another one comes in. Uh, so far, they have all been positive. The last feedback is if we can't get a list of resources for all the books and other materials that was quoted in the studies, talks with PowerPoint slides were more easy to understand the structure of the talk. Okay, we'll keep that in mind. Majority of the talks that were held over the past 10 days, uh, did have a PowerPoint. Uh, uh, hope to see more in the future. Uh, and would you like to make any comment, Brother Azhar? I saw your face since uh, you were the driving force. Your, your microphone is off. 
So Thank you very much, Avat Arani. Uh, it, um, it was great to play and I wanted to thank you for your moderation, your support uh, for the whole course for 10 days. May Allah bless you and your family. And inshallah, we all benefited from all great scholars, inshallah. And uh, hopefully, inshallah, in near future, we are bringing some more courses, inshallah, uh, uh, for our community. Thank you very much again, Avat Arani. Thank you for all your efforts. And inshallah, uh, as time goes on, we will uh, analyze these and those that are really worthy. All of them, all of them were worthy, but uh, we would like to make sure that what we put on YouTube is definitely representative of what college is standing uh, for. And therefore, we would like to edit them and make them available to you and the public because this will be the face of the college. Inshallah, inshallah, uh, we will upload everything on the YouTube. Inshallah, inshallah. After, after proper uh, uh, editing, they will be put on, the, on YouTube. And then uh, I suppose this is the end of it. Even though it's difficult to say goodbye to all of you, we have been together for the past 10 nights. I have to say goodbye. But before saying goodbye, I would like to thank all the participants for today's session, those who have been with us over the past 10 days. And most of all, um, uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank Sheikh Mohammed Yan, who has been the uh, driving force of these 10 nights, uh, the main organizer and the uh, director of short courses at the Islamic College. Thank you all. May Allah bless you. Uh, any final words, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Yan? No, thank you. Thank you. Okay, would you like to uh, do a short prayer? Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Allahumma ajjal fi faraja mawlana sahib. Allahumma aghfir lil mu'minin wa al mu'minat wa al muslimin wa al muslimat. Al ahya'i minhum wa al amwat ta'bi' bainana wa bainahum bil khayrat innaka mujib al da'awat innaka ghafir al khati'at innaka ala kulli shay'in qadeer. رحم الله من قرأ الفاتحة من الصلوات اللهم صل اللهم صل آقا تشكر میکنیم خ... Thank you very much Okay Thank you everybody مع السلامة خداحفظ عيد برچه خداحفظ شو